they have them crushed in the early weeks of the season. Injuries to key players and four losses in their first seven games threatened to doom the Steelers' season of promise. But head coach Bill Cower refused to let his team quit. And a season of pain turned into a Super Bowl run. Every game became a 60-minute battle, and the Steelers fought each war to the last tick of the clock. The clock is winding. It's down to 6.30 remaining. And we got ourselves a tooth the nail ball game once more. Clock winds to 5.25 remaining. Come on! Hey! Clock at 2.34. Yoy and double yoy. 151 to go. Holy smokes! And the clock winds to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. You know what you did? find a way to win there's a belief there's a will and i'll tell you what if you stay at things and you don't ever stop believing you make your own good fortune you gotta play for 60 minutes you gotta play for 60 minutes starting with the opening day of the season pittsburgh's 60 minute man battled to the final seconds. The game is riding on the right foot of free agent Norm Johnson. Snap down, kick on its way. It's up, it's good, we're out of here. The Steelers win their opener. The following week, Andre Hastings ignited a win in Houston. Taking it as Hastings finds the wall left, he's at the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. Beats a kicker in the 40. There goes Andre Hastings all the way for the Steelers touchdown. Mike Tomczak started in place of injured quarterback Neil O'Donnell and hit tight end Mark Bruner for his first career touchdown catch in the Steelers' win. The team's fast start was deceiving, however. Rod Woodson's knee injury in week one kept him out the rest of the regular season. And painful losses dropped the Steelers to three and four. point came in Jacksonville, where despite Steve Avery's tremendous effort, the Steelers were stunned by the expansion Jaguars. The Steelers have been ambushed here in Jacksonville. The Steelers now have to go back to the drawing board and figure out how they're going to get back into the playoff picture. After the seventh game, man, we, we did some soul searching. This group of men have been through a lot. As the adversity comes, allow us our resolve to grow stronger. Guys came together and, you know, we spent a little more time in the meeting rooms and uh, looking at a little bit more film, uh, just doing the smaller things. And uh, I think we came together a little bit more. We decided that, you know, what had happened had happened, and let's make this a, uh, you know, a nine-game season. We've got nine games left, baby. We've got to make the best of them. That's all there is to it. And everybody understood what their role was. They stepped it up. They became focused, and there was a belief in that, yeah, we can do this. All day proposition in our backyard from the first kickoff to the last. Let's get out. Let's do it. Let's get that day. He's going over the middle again. In week nine, the Steelers unloaded on Jacksonville. Make him run up the middle. He run up the middle. He can't do it. He's ahead, too. That means he's ready. He's lying 10 feet away from the middle. He better slide. I'm going to bust it. Joining the hit parade were cover men like Dante Jones, Fred McAfee, and number 41, Lethon Flowers. Start of a nine-game season. And I'm gonna tell you something. The next eight weeks, we're gonna take it one week at a time. You can talk about all the things that have happened to this football team, but the one thing you can't take away is a resolve. The Steelers never showed more resolve than the following week in Chicago, as they battled back time and time again and overcame two fourth-quarter deficits. 
Eric Pegram added new spark to the offense with a career-high three touchdowns. But the Steelers still trailed by a seven in the final minutes before receiver Ernie Mills came up big in the clutch. Fourth and a long six, almost seven. One last gas for the Steelers in a minute ten remaining. Shotgun empty, Sam O'Donnell back, delayed blitz. He fires over the middle. Touchdown, Steelers! Ernie Mills! In overtime, Norm Johnson, who would finish as the AFC's leading scorer, capped the thrilling the victory. Snap, the hold, the kick is on its way, and we're out of the Windy City! The Steelers win it! The Steelers win it! The Steelers win it in overtime! In a season filled with pitfalls, it was easy to lose one's footing. Somebody's got me off my feet. Head coach Bill Cower refused to stay down, however, and made sure his players remained on even ground. Listen, listen, listen. I love your enthusiasm. I love, hey, listen. Remember, this is some boys, okay? Don't cross this 15. All right, don't cross this 15. In his most challenging season, Cower wasn't afraid to shuffle his lineup and his game plan to come up with the right formula. His boldest move was to switch all-pro safety Carnell Lake to cornerback. And Lake responded to the challenge with a Pro Bowl season. Lake's move left his safety spot to young Myron Bell, who learned from veteran Darren Perry. At the other corner, number 27, Willie Williams, filled the big shoes of Rod Woodson and led the AFC with seven interceptions. He's up to the 45 and 50, the 45 and 40, still on his feet, touch inside at the 30. Now he goes to the middle of the field at the 20. He's the run at the 15, 10. Willie Williams goes all the way for that Steeler touchdown. Williams had one of two Steelers interception returns for touchdowns in an early season win over the Chargers. Interception, interception. offense came even more changes as the Steelers opened things up to become one of the league's most explosive teams. Receivers like Charles Johnson, Andre Hastings, and Ernie Mills helped the Steelers lead the AFC in scoring. The wide open offense meant new adjustments up front for lineman Justin Strelzik, rookie Brendan Stein, Tom Newberry, John Jackson, and the league's premier center, Dermonte Dawson, who all helped a new star emerge in the Steelers' offense. Receiver Yancey Thigpen became a Pro Bowl performer with a team record 85 catches, and his more than 1,300 yards made him the first Steelers' 1,000-yard receiver in 10 years. While Thigpen was the Steelers' most productive weapon, a certain rookie became the league's most unpredictable. I see Cordell Stewart into the ball game. My. Cordell Stewart is in there as a wide receiver. Flash is lined up in the backfield. Stewart in the slot left. Cordell Stewart is the quarterback. Flash in motion to the outside left, and he's going to pooch it. He does it all. Cordell Slash Stewart was the most versatile performer to hit the NFL in years. Cordell is a quarterback. Cordell rolling right. Fakes the pitch and turns up field and gets the first down to the 25-yard line. Welcome to College Football USA. Yes, take us back to the dear old campus. Hey, Slasher. Look like you run that before. Good job, Slash. Pitch back to the left side. Stewart looking for the block. Turns it at the 20, the 15, the 10. One man to beat. And he's into the end zone for the Steelers touchdown. Cordell Stewart. is rolling right, looking, looking, pumping. Now he wants to throw it back, and he ducks out of there, and he's going to reverse field. He gets a run. He's running at the 10. Now he's going to throw it on the run into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers! What a play by Cordell Stewart, and only a great athlete could make it happen. Stewart not only helped beat the Browns on a Monday night, but also opened things up for the rest of the attack. 
and the Steelers' new offense was at its best in an amazing Week 12 comeback in Cincinnati. Pittsburgh erased the 31-13 deficit with 36 unanswered points. The Steelers have battled from 18 points back and now trail by three. Stewart in the slot. Back is O'Donnell. He's looking for Stewart. Stewart's open. He's got it at the 40, the 30, the 25. Definitely. Cordell Stewart is going to go all the way for the Steelers touchdown. And Cordell Stewart is just something else. The Steelers' greatest comeback in years proved they could now win the shootouts as well as the slugfests and showed that their offense was now as dangerous as their ever-intimidating defense. Everybody's taking care of business. Everybody gets to the gap. And listen, let's just follow this, all right? Here we go. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, three. Front. Pressure came from Joel Steed, Brinson Buckner, Bill Johnson, number 76, Stephen Henry, and Ray C. At linebacker, Kevin Green was joined by LaVon Kirkland, one of the league's premier run stuffers, as well as rising star Chad Brown. And the leader of the group was once again Greg Lloyd, whose punishing style earned him his fifth straight Pro Bowl appearance. <laughs> Under new defensive coordinator Dick LeBeau, the unit ranked third in the NFL. And in week 13, the defense forced turnovers on the Browns' first two possessions with a second takeaway setting up a score by Mark Bruner. Steelers hung on for their fifth straight victory and continued their winning streak the following week against the Oilers. O'Donnell, short pocket pass over the middle. It's pulled in. Here's Nancy Thigpen. He's loose to the secondary, and he's going to go all the way. Nancy Thigpen, 33 yards. Yeah! 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 The win earned the Steelers their third division title in four years. You won a division? You've ensured yourself you've at least one playoff game here. Let me tell you something, guys. We're going for a bye week in every playoff game. Right, here. Right. Oh. The next week, the voracious Steelers defense forced four turnovers and nearly ripped the Raiders to shreds. Later, the Mad Dog stayed on the attack. And the ball is loose and picked up, and here comes a big man with it. It is Brinson Butler. And he's rambling, he's rambling, he's going all the way for the Steeler touchdown. Let's go! Put these guys away. Let's tee off, man. Another defensive touchdown put the finishing touches on the Steelers' eighth straight win. He's tackled immediately. He lost it. And he lost the football. And the Steelers are scrambling for it. They pick it up. Here comes Chris Oldham. He's running for the end zone. And he's down and in for the touchdown. The Steelers have scored again. What you've done now is you've earned yourself a week off. Now I'll tell you what. These teams have to come through here. Yeah. Go to the Super Bowl. Yep, baby. They're in for a long Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah, man. Let's 
back for the end zone. The pass is caught in the end zone. A leaping grab by Ernie Mills. What a play. In their opening playoff game, the Steelers overpowered the Bills. Thing, and we're playing again next week. This was a three-game season. One of three. right, man. That's the first game, and next week is the second right. game. And I don't give it to right. me. We play. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Indy Colts. The two teams battling for the right to go to the Super Bowl. Stay in this whole city vividly. Remember what happened in the AFC Championship game last year. Let's go, Steelers! Yeah! Scramble right, gets a block. Look at Cordell. Turns, looks for the end zone, fires, and it's caught in the end zone for the touchdown. Slash, Stewart pulls it in, in the right corner of the end zone. The Steelers went ahead 10 to 6, but the Colts came back with a fourth quarter touchdown to regain the lead. In order to avoid another championship game disappointment, the Steelers needed to dig down deep and muster every ounce of heart they had, beginning with a key defensive stand in the final minutes. Third one, and he turns and he gives it to Lamont Warren, and he's tripped up, and he doesn't make it! And I think it was Willie Williams coming from the other side from the corner who tracked him down in the backfield. Next, it was do or die for the offense, with just over two minutes remaining. Now it's... No tomorrow. It's fourth down and three for the Steelers at the Colts 47-yard line. Three-man rush. O'Donnell steps up. Looks. Fires. Pass complete at the 45-yard line. That's a Steeler first down on fourth down. Oh, boy. Everybody here is on pins and needles. Steal out of the shotgun. Four-man rush. He's going to throw it deep. And there's a man open down there. And it is caught at the three-yard line and out of bounds at the one. What a great grab by Ernie Mills. And the clock is now stopped at 138. The Steelers give it to the right and drive it into the end zone. It's Sam Moore for the Steelers touchdown. And this place erupts. This place is gone berserk. Look out, jumping 60,000 people, jumping up and down, making them count. The place is shaking. With the Steelers protecting a four-point lead, the game came down to one final play. Here we go. For the right to go to the Super Bowl. Harbaugh, five seconds left is back. He has time and he launches a rainbow and it goes up and it's starting to come down to the end zone. And down there, it is juggled and in the end zone. Oh my God! The ball hit the turf. The Steelers are heading to Phoenix. And this is one of the most unbelievable football games we have ever witnessed. For you, Dan. For you. For you. You deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen. You're really good. This trophy, while it's only half of what we want to accomplish, is for Dan Rooney, and more importantly, the fans of Pittsburgh, baby. This is for you. We've come too far. We've overcome too much. Remember what we said. Toys, 60 minutes, and physical. Right on this kickoff. In Super Bowl 30, the Steelers fell behind 13 to nothing. A lot of football. A lot of football, man. A lot of football left. Let's go. Let's go. A lot of football. Pittsburgh refused to give in and mounted a drive before halftime to get back into the game. Slap pattern from the goal line. Touchdown, Steelers. Pulling that ball in is Gancy Thickpen. And this place is on fire. Look at the tail.
In the second half, the defense clamped down on Emmett Smith and the Cowboys as LeVon Kirkland extended himself beyond the limit to get to the ball carrier. As the Steelers battled back from a 20-7 deficit, perhaps no one personified their heart more than Rod Woodson, the only player ever to come back from a serious knee injury to play in the same season. After a Norm Johnson field goal cut the Cowboys' lead, the youngest head coach in Super Bowl history was faced with one of his toughest decisions. Oh, surprise on side. What do you think, Chan? Chan, surprise on side. Hey, let's do it. Surprise on side. Hey, Dick, I'm going on side here. Not leaving anything in the bag. One of the gutsiest Super Bowl calls ever paid off. The Steelers trying an outside kick, and they got it! And a man running with the football at the 50, and it's out of bounds on the far sideline! With that football for the Steelers is Dion Figures! How about that? Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Hey, Marty! Let's go! Let's go! Third down and goal from inches away. Again, a tight formation. The give to Bam. And Bam walks into the end zone for the Steelers. remaining. He gets a snap. Here comes an outside blitz. The pass is picked off. An open field. Here comes Larry Brown to the 15. He's to the 10 and he's knocked out of bounds on the far side at the Steelers six yard line. The Steelers come back fell short but only after they had bravely fought the entire 60 minutes. in the locker room, okay. Ah, sometimes you run, sometimes you lose. Good job, I looked down at my daughter, and what she said to me, I'll never forget. She said to me, she looked down and she said, Daddy, win or lose, you'll still be my hero. I remember telling her that uh, you win some and you lose some, and that the most important thing is that you do your best. And I can honestly say our football team did that. I think that was one thing that you could say about the Pittsburgh Steelers is that regardless of how it unfolded, we were going to finish it off. And that was the one thing you could be assured of, that you were going to have to play us for 60 minutes and maybe more sometimes. There were times during the 1995 season the Steelers could have given in. That's not what these men were about. The 1995 Pittsburgh Steelers never stopped battling until the final tick of the clock. And their will to fight to the very end made them football's true 60-minute men.